Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar on integrated care that we are organizing in the framework of SUSTAIN, an EU-funded project that has been running since 2015 for the past four years. The project is now coming to an end, and we have delivered the main product of the project, which has been a roadmap for the improvement, development, inter implementation of integrated care across Europe. So thanks to everyone for joining this webinar, which we know uh, is covering a topic that is very timely and really uh, important for many stakeholders across across Europe. So we hope the webinar will make you understand better what Sustain delivered and how the roadmap can help you in your respective positions, responsibilities, areas of work. So thanks for joining. Uh, just as housekeeping, keeping, let me remind that uh, this is being recorded and that the recording is being posted in, in YouTube. And let me also remind that uh, you will have the chance to take the floor to ask questions and to make comments. This will be during uh, the open floor that, uh, well, that I will open uh, after each presenter's uh, presentations. Also, during the whole webinar, you may write any questions, any comments you may have in the chat window that you will find at the bottom of the GoToMeeting window. So let me start now the webinar by giving the floor to uh, Maggie Langins. So Maggie is a senior fellow at the International Foundation for Integrated Care. And Maggie has been, uh, let's say, the, the star uh, behind the, to a great extent of uh, lots of the work that led to the Sustain Roadmap. And Maggie will now introduce you to very briefly Sustain, the project, and also specifically the Roadmap. So now I give the floor to Maggie. Thank you, Borja. Um, and you will let me share my screen as well. Yes. Yeah. All right. There you go. There we go. OK. Good morning, good afternoon, folks. Um, it's really a pleasure to um, get to the end of these three years and present this really important work that SUSTAIN, um, which stands for Sustainable Tailored Integrated Care for Older People in Europe, has been working towards over the past three years. Um, I, I, I really have to correct Borja in saying uh, that I might have been a star in this because actually this was an extremely collaborative effort. Um, while the International Foundation for Integrated Care, where I am based, uh, was leading the process of um, translating the three years into a roadmap, um, I really need to express special thanks to all the sites that participated in SUSTAIN project, the researchers and partners of the SUSTAIN consortium for all their input into this. And it has been a really, really rich experience um, uh, putting this together and it is a real exercise in translating practice to research and finally to policy and uh, practical sort of application of all these lessons learned. So um, just on the top left corner of the screen is the website where you can find this roadmap. Um, and it, uh, when you, there's a special tab and that you can click on the roadmap and you'll see this cover and this is, this is it. Now, um, just to review what we, what we hope to do today, um, we first want to set the scene for why such a roadmap was needed, why do we have it, a, a brief reminder of the sustained project. Then I really want to just focus on introducing the roadmap and describing how it can be used by different stakeholders. And then Jillian, my sidekick or um, my partner in crime here, is going to enrich the whole discussion by contextualizing the roadmap in a real example. So just to situate us, um, this is from our last ICIC conference in Utrecht in the Netherlands, where we displayed the experience of uh, one of the users uh, in the sustain sites. And uh, I think you're all familiar with these sorts. You might all be familiar with these sorts of webs of care, but to situate us um, and remind us of this 
increasingly complicated web of services that older people are uh, relying on to maintain a dignified and healthy lifestyle in the shadows often of complex and multimorbidities. Um, and it's increasingly looking like people have upwards from 20 to 30 sorts of services that they are reaching out to, whether it be dentists or, or equipment services for wheelchairs or oxygen tanks or um, a volunteer service that brings food uh, to their homes. But essentially, the situation that we are facing, it's not um, strange to any of you, no doubt, is that um, there is an increased number of people with chronic conditions um, and that these are um, being served by not only health care demands, health care services, but also social care services, but that health systems are often uh, not planned, sorry, that should say, not planned and coordinated and are often disconnected and unbalanced in, in the ways these uh, ser different services are addressed. And they're also poorly oriented, and this will be sort of part of our first um, section of the roadmap, where the value system and the sort of uh, basis on the fundamental values on which these services are based are misoriented towards me medical approaches and not to the person and to their well-being. Um, but also that a lot still in these contexts lies with self-responsibility and self-management, um, increasingly so, and that we have no, um, it, 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 we, I want to say no choice, but it's not even a matter of choice, it's a, it's a matter of being realistic for these services to um, produce the best outcomes. People absolutely need to be involved in the decisions of their health and social care and that we as health practitioners and social care practitioners have sometimes failed to understand how to actually do that, um, sort of wearing our silo hats. So, um, uh, just a quick reminder about the SUSTAIN project's aims. Uh, the first was to support and monitor, um, sorry, um, the was to first support and monitor improvement projects to establish, in, to establish integrated care initiatives for older people. So I, I do need to emphasize that, that the people and the services that um, our teams worked with were already um, integrating care to some degree and we're looking to monitor improvements. And the second aim of SUSTAIN was to contribute to the adoption and application of these improvements to other health and social care systems. And this is a really unique feature of the SUSTAIN project in that um, it really, um, it worked with a range of partners across Europe um, and it worked within seven countries um, and th 13 different service sites um, uh, that were integrating, uh, integrating health and social care. So a really rich amount of information about the experiences of health and social care providers on how um, end users on how um, what works and how to improve integrated care. Um, very briefly, the types of services that were engaged in the SUSTAIN project were um, ranged from proactive primary care to rehabilitative care, rehabilitative care to dementia care, home nursing and transi transitional care. Um, but really the focus was on these services that um, were bringing services as close to people's homes as possible and um, were working with people 75 years and older. As I said, um, the SUSTAIN project worked with improvement projects and they can be clustered in three different uh, sorts of categories, collaboration, coordination, uh, information exchange, and more person-centered ways of working. And the way the project was set up was that we had researchers from our consortium uh, 
partners uh, working closely with the service sites. And so they had very, two roles. They were embedded and very close to the services and very familiar with um, uh, in the everyday practice of what was happening in those services, but they also served as an external resource and evaluator that could look at um, and were protected um, in terms of their time and um, efforts to externally evaluate the improvement projects. So um, after these, so that was the main body of the project was that, you know, two years were spent um, identifying, and we'll talk about some of those stages, um, uh, preparing for improvement. But after these two years, this body of knowledge and experience um, had to be consolidated to provide anybody working on improving integrated care with an open access and easy to use resource to plan, design and implement integrated care for older people living at home with complex care needs. And so it was really about integrating, translating and customizing work done by partners and developing a step by step guide for successful adoption. And that this this roadmap was co-designed with case sites and end users. Um, in order for it to really speak um, relevantly um, to the different stakeholders, it, it, it seeks to help with um, implementing integrated care. Um, and yeah, so it, it um, also, uh, this last, this fourth point is sort of quite similar to the first point in that it, um, it is a tool by which we can disseminate further and exploit the results um, throughout the project. Um, so basically, this roadmap is for you if you are someone who is setting priorities for your health and social care systems that you might be a representing a national, regional or local authority, or you might be trying to improve a service or an arrangement of service, or you might be working directly with older persons and in need of resources to explain what, why and how. You might be a patient, you might be an informal caregiver that um, needs tools and, and, and something to help support you in advocating for better care for your loved one. Um, or you might be working in evidence synthesis and there's a lot of evidence to back up uh, the roadmap and so um, uh, the reference list will, you will find really serves the purpose of um, uh, supporting your work. So in other words, you are a change agent and you are interested in changing the way things are done. So this is the roadmap, um, the sort of visualization of the roadmap. And at this moment, I'm just, we're going to go uh, to it. So as I said, it's on the uh, Sustain website um, and you will download a document like this that, um, Sorry, I'm just going to go back to the beginning. That is a PDF document. And you'll see that it's 105 pages, but it's actually an interactive uh, PDF. And it, um, it allows you to sort of move around in the roadmap. Um, here at the very beginning, we again situate you um, to the sorts of clients that we have been working with. Um, there's a little bit about the sustained project again, stuff I've just shared with you. And um, now we are at the part about um, uh, the actual sections of the roadmap. So uh, we have, I would say it's more like a four books plus one because we have the resources at the end of the roadmap. But essentially, uh, the roadmap first provides some design features, which are those values that underline integrated care. Um, then there is a second part for those people who are interested in setting up integrated care. Um, these are some of the elements that were already in place before our improvement site, our, the sites that we worked with decided to engage with improvement. Then we have a book really devoted to um, the improvement process and how it took place and sustain. And then we look at the greater context of integrated care. Um, and the elements that are required to create an enabling environment for integrated care to happen. So 
Um, let's go to the first book. So the neat feature is here is that you can either go to, um, you might want to start with uh, looking at how to use this roadmap in the right corner, but um, we're going to jump right into um, book one. And so the main point of book one, as I said, was to really expose the values towards care and caregiving or the fundamental design features of integrated care um, that are sustain uh, sites and our research partners and our consortium partners all uh, agreed were underlie um, the implementation of relevant and um, uh, effective integrated care. And so if you are, so this really applies to anyone actually, it doesn't, it's not just for decision makers, but um, what is neat about this section is not only do we um, describe for you the different features of uh, integrated care, we talk about what what do we mean by improving centered person-centered care and why this is important but we also provide a series of activities that you can find um, that we feel from our sustained experience were important to um, uh, making person-centered care embracing a more person-centered care approach and if you go to each of these um, uh, tabs here which correspond with the essential activities to achieve person-centered care you can here find um, not only a description on what we mean by that actual activity and um, what does it, and why it's important but there are references and resources linked to um, these sections that can provide you with tools and um, information so um, yeah, so basically what we identified as being those essential values were person-centeredness, that this is still um, very quite difficult to, um, to get services, practitioners, even, even sometimes the informal carers working with users um, to embrace, but it really involves focusing on needs and preferences um, and taking a family-centered approach in order to have more meaningful planning and decision making. Um, the second uh, feature that um, still un is critical and underlies um, integrated care and, and demands more um, reinforcement amongst uh, the people implementing services is the importance of coordination and um, really that this is coordination that is assessment focused, um, that it is specifically done with users, that it is interdisciplinary, and that it is comprehensive um, with health and social care working together. A third feature that we um, identified as extremely important from our sustained sites were an empowered interdisciplinary workforce or interprofessional workforce. And here, um, seeing our interprofessional workforce not only as a resource for implementing great care for our users and knowing how to work with our users and being able to be flexible for our users, but also to look at our interprofessional workforce, the health and social care providers, uh, professionals as um, critical for shaping the development, the design, and improvement of services. Um, and yes, again, here's an example where you can um, uh, look up the different uh, essential activities that are important to embrace that approach in your care. Um, and finally, um, it it was extremely important to emphasize uh, safe, the safeguarding of dignity um, of our older people. Um, there are two aspects to this value, to this design feature, and that is that um, 
uh, we must reach out more to communities to help support the implementation of health and social care services. Um, and, and by that, I mean reaching out to patient representatives, the users themselves to proactively address societal misconceptions of aging, and also to um, take a rights-based approach that far too often is compromised for older people. Um, uh, services are far too often compromising um, care and uh, decreasing the standards of care because of societal norms that look at older people as, um, well, being more difficult, taking too much time, um, a sort of approach that looks at them as children and um, and so this is really disturbing and it was really um, this this feature was informed by the age platform members who firsthand also expressed um, and contributed to uh, the resources that you can find um, in this design feature. Um, and then moving on to book two. Now this this book two is um, uh, more geared towards uh, regional authorities, municipal authorities, or um, people in charge of networks of, of services. And as I said earlier, this step was often already taken by our integrated care sites, but um, in one way or another, and we found and were able to identify, you know, three of the steps that are needed to set yourself up um, as a service for um, improved uh, care for older people in their homes. And again, you can navigate the roadmap by looking at how, for instance, one approaches assessing the needs and priorities of your population um, to take a population approach um, or to build a value case among and across your services for how you're going to um, uh, what priorities you're going to take and what's your vision for change and then uh, determining priority action areas um, and as a uh, and as a third step or uh, sorry a third step we have um, it, it, the elements of workforce development, strategic purchasing, financial incentives, governance and accountability. And these can be followed up and uh, looked at the roadmap. So now moving on to the third book, um, this is really for if you are a service manager or you are part of the workforce um, where you have some degree of integration happening, but you want to improve it. And I have to sort of, sorry, I should have emphasized this at the beginning that the Sustain website um, has an enormous amount of resources um, that the project has worked on, the consortium members have worked on to report on individual sites. Um, and uh, so they have a lot of information there also about the different phases that they followed um, using the evidence integration triangle uh, approach to um, service improvement. Um, but the, the core component of this book three is really not just to um, share with you what those steps are, but to emphasize um, to emphasize what we have learned as a sustained consortium. What, where are the places that you might want to invest more or less when you are improving integrated care? Um, so there are these three, these four phases that the project followed. Um, and uh, in terms of preparation, uh, design, implementation, and monitoring, evaluation, feedback. And this was by no means a linear process. I mean, the reality of this is that you're working with health and social care professionals who are very busy. They're working with different timelines, considering um, you have, uh, I mean, people are very busy and people um, are not always able to follow through with one step and move so clearly to a second step. Um, without revisiting a first step or the third step. But um, what is important here is not 
the linearity of this process and that, that one phase happens after the other, but that this book shares with you um, uh, where you might want to invest more or less of your time and why. Um, so uh, you can look at each of these phases um, where we do establish the sorts of activities, but then we, um, yeah, we, we expand here in the section with quotes from our sustained sites about what really, why these phases were so important. And then finally, um, we go to book four, and this is really, you know, underlying the simply stated purpose of providing integrated care is not only, it's not only about implementation and improvement steps that, that we described in books two and three, but that this is underlying, this is underlined by very complex business of context. And so this book is for those interested in thinking of addressing the significant cultural or organizational issues um, that they need to address. And with the help of our colleague at London School of Economics, we focused on three aspects of strategic thinking. Um, uh, that relate to really engaging stakeholders, so how we know where our stakeholders are and what their interests are, but also how to build relationships and creating safe spaces for overcoming hierarchies, um, how to make systematic change through goal harmonization. Here you can see um, this section on how you can make systematic change through goal harmonization and soft skills of organizing act actors across what are increasingly more network based um, uh, network based groups of actors um, without compromising leadership um, by and securing shared responsibility across the network um, and really get the best and the most holistic picture of things. And then the third uh, layer to this context is about creating the enabling environment. And here you get into um, a good description and reflections on the national and regional, uh, what is responsibilities um, for creating an environment of least resistance uh, to local and micro solutions that services are trying to implement and improve. So, an enabling, an enabling health system will not guarantee, but it will support the coming together of health and social care professionals. And an enabling system will not guarantee that services will, um, sorry, uh, an enabling situation uh, health system will not guarantee that services will be integrated, but it, it should aid the process just as disabling aspects may may hinder it. So, um, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so that's the roadmap. Um, I'm going to turn my mic off and pass this off to uh, Jillian to comment in a more uh, sort of contextualize what I've spoken about, which is perhaps still abstract and but hopefully you will be able to use this roadmap in its various books. Um, use its various books for your purposes. Borja, can you shut yep. me off? Yes. Okay. So, hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Maggie. Uh, yes. So thanks a lot for that uh, for the presentation, and I hope I hope you can respond to the to the to the to the phone. Uh, but really, thanks for the presentation. You navigated us really really well uh, through the. Uh, through the through the roadmap actually um, and uh, well I had a couple of uh, we had a couple of reactions from uh, from some of the uh, some of the participants to this uh, to this webinar uh, which I will I will address uh, later on so I see uh, there is a question about the usability of the product uh, and whether this is really accessible I must say that as it is a PDF, this allows to to zoom and to navigate it really to to make it pretty accessible. So we are pretty kind of happy that this is actually pretty accessible in the sense that you know users can adapt it to their to their own needs. Um, 
but there are a couple of other questions also it will be important to, to address but now maybe I will give the floor to uh, to Gillian uh, because well the interesting thing is that uh, sustain was implemented in uh, across 13 sites in seven different European Union countries and that the roadmap is building uh, to a really great extent to you know the the main material of the and the main uh, source of the of the roadmap are the experiences of these 13 sites in seven different countries and one of those uh, sites were two of those sites were in in Catalonia in Spain and uh, Gillian Reynolds was uh, involved in that and she will uh, tell us about the improvement plan in Cat in Catalonia and how they implemented that so Gillian I give you the floor great thank you um, yeah, I make you presenter, so now you can you have the control and you great. can show us your your slides. I have the control. Great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's put this on the full screen. That's it. Great. So, um, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. Um, I'm Julian Reynolds. I'm a researcher at the Agency for Health Quality and Assessment of Catalonia. So I'm on, on behalf of the team that has worked in SUSTAIN for the last four years. Um, we've had the opportunity to work hand in hand with two local integrated care initiatives here in Catalonia in SUSTAIN. So what I'm going to do today or try to do today is to share the experience of the Catalan initiatives improving the care they provide. And I hope by doing this, I hope to highlight how the Catalan Improvement Projects, together with similar experiences in the 11 other sustained sites, have served as food for thought and real-world evidence inspiring the content of the sustained world map. Okay, so, um, in the proposal phase of the EU-funded research project, SUSTAIN aimed to select and get on board local initiatives with consolidated experience providing integrated care to older persons with complex health and social needs and these people living at home. This is what we refer to by sight. The type of care that they could provide, as Maggie has said, could uh, range. So we had some people um, doing providing transitional care, some sites were working on um, dementia care, and in the Catalan case we were working, the two sites were providing proactive primary care from social and health services. The common point there was that they had to be willing to improve at least one of the sustained dimensions, person centeredness, safety, coordination, efficiency, and they had to work applying the framework designed by sustained. In particular, this meant that they had to first prepare for improvement. They had to undertake a baseline assessment between relevant stakeholders. This included representatives of the different organizations or care providers, the social councils, the um, health providers, primary care centers, hospitals, but also some representatives of users who, of the services. This would help take stock of what was currently being done and then they could agree on which aspects needed improving and given priority. So by doing this, they could identify the opportunities for improvement. Sites were then asked to establish steering groups, representing the different institutions and staff profiles that were involved, or that were going to actually have to do the improvement project. This group of people had to meet regularly, and with the support of sustained researchers like myself, they would be in charge of developing the improvement projects. The next steps would be to design and implement these improvement projects over an 18-month period. So they had to agree to the aim of the improvement project, the objectives, and think of the activities and tools that they needed to fulfill these goals. The steering group would then co-design the new tools and agree to a new work method to be put in place. Once all of this was ready, over this 18-month period, they had to recruit between 15 to 30 service users and their carers. Sites were aware that the research project meant monitoring and evaluating the improvement projects. So they had to be willing to provide sustained researchers the data we needed to assess process and results. This included professional and manager reported experience through interviews and focus groups, user and care experiences with the care they receive, and also care plan analysis amongst others. So every six months, sustained researchers would undertake an interim assessment, and then we would feed back these results to the steering group. This design feature of the research project proved to be really useful for people with the steering group, who could see if they were making any difference, where they were failing, 
and then see if they could address these shortcomings in the following months. The process that I've just explained is no other than the improvement cycle described in book three of the roadmap. And this is what we applied and sustained. So we prepared, we designed, we implemented, and we evaluated and, and fed back on an ongoing process, as Maggie has said. So going back to Catalonia, even before Sustain began, two sites were identified by my, my institution, Aquas, which were the Ozona Programme for Chronic Patients and Geriatric Population, and the North Sabadell Initiative for Social and Health Integration. Both had previous experiences between social care and healthcare institutions, and they were willing to apply this improvement cycle. So just to contextualize, I'll give you some idea of, of what these sites are. They're both located in the province of Barcelona, but they're quite different. Sabadell is an industrial city, whereas Uzona is a rural counter, county sorry, with uh, three small well, medium-sized cities and then small vi villages that are scattered around the surrounding valley. Primary healthcare is provided in Catalonia through primary healthcare centres, basically with teams of GPs and nurses who have an assigned amount of patients. The particularity in Sabadell is that for over 20 years now, social workers employed by the city council also work in these buildings. So they are in close contact with GPs and nurses. In Uzona, primary healthcare centers worked in collaboration with local social services and the local hospitals. But in this case, institutions, so they're not all under the same roof. So when we started, when we're talking about the steering group, who did we have on board? In both Sabadell and Ozona, we had GPs, primary care nurses, social workers and managers of both the health institutions and the social care providers. In Ozona, we also had social workers who were employed by healthcare institutions and healthcare specialists who were working in the hospitals. Both of these sites were providing care for 65 plus users who were living at home and had complex health and social needs. And in the case of Uzona, many were already receiving home health care. So, as, as illustrated by Romac Book 4, the one on context, we need to understand the context in which these local integrated care initiatives were operating when they started developing their improvement plans. There are four essential points here. Healthcare in Spain is devolved to the regional level. So there is one common system across Catalonia with the Catalan Health Institute acting as a main public provider and shared electronic health records. Healthcare is funded through general tax, guaranteeing a universal access to services and treatment. Concerning social care, basic services such as home help to older persons are a local competence. These include telecare, cleaning, technical adaptations, and since this is a local competence, the care system is fragmented with a multitude of care providers and different IT systems. The funding depends on the local council budget. It's partly funded by tax, but also by payment of the users. So this in practice means that depending on where you live, you're entitled to more or less services with varying criteria for co-payment. Two policy measures are particularly relevant here. So in 2007, Spain passed the Dependency Act, promoting personal autonomy and establishing the criteria for assessing levels of dependency. The social care sector was then made responsible for, 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 for performing sorry, these assessments. And this came as a novelty because traditionally social care in Spain had not focused on this field. It was more um, focused on social exclusion, uh, preventing social exclusion, I should say. So in practice, this law triggered an increase in collaboration between social care and healthcare institutions who were more familiar with assessing clinical and functional conditions. In 2011, in particular, the Catalan government created a program for prevention and chronic care. This program required the elaboration of shared individualized intervention plans for all people assessed as being complex chronic patients. This healthcare plan called the PEAK was stored in the electronic health records so that any professional could access it and consult it. For instance, when a patient was admitted in hospital and a rapid reaction. So 
When Sustain started in Catalonia, social care and healthcare professionals of our local initiatives already knew each other and they shared some common challenges in order to improve the, the care they were providing for the older people living at home. They recognized they were each performing their own assessments and working with parallel care plans, which only had a partial view. This did not only mean a waste of the users and professionals time, for instance, when they were applying the same, uh, the same scale and not sharing the results of these scales, which could also be different. <laughs> it also meant that the different teams could all be pursuing different goals and putting in place overlapping resources for some aspects, while others, other needs were perhaps not being properly addressed. Although the professionals from two sectors were attempting to coordinate and jointly assess cases, they lacked a common tool to do so. And they did not have a protective space in their agenda to do this. So sometimes the meetings would not happen because training, for instance, was, was um, put in, 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 the, in the slot they had for coordination. Therefore, this coordination was done as and when possible or extremely necessary, rather than routinely and proactively. The shared individualized intervention plan, or this PIC, was mostly being elaborated by primary care staff, healthcare staff, who sometimes struggled to fill in specific areas where advice from health specialists would be useful. Since they were compulsory for all the chronic complex patients, but also they were time demanding, quality was sometimes suboptimal. And more importantly, these care plans were shared between health professionals, but not with local social services, nor with the user. So the user, so we could say, was a mere recipient of the care plan rather than an active agent involved in decisions. All in all, professionals may have been motivated by the person-centered approach, but they were lacking the setting, the tools and the skills to make it possible. In other words, members of the steering groups recognized that there were fundamentals of integrated care that were not being completely conveyed at their sites. The baseline assessment they did in the frame of sustain helped to acknowledge and reflect on the necessary design features for integrated care that were not in place and then prioritize which aspects they wanted to tackle. These features, together with the corresponding features of the other 11 improvement projects implemented in sustain, have what, have, what inspires book one of the roadmap. The design features of integrated care described there are based on what real life initiatives have considered crucial in order to provide a truly integrated care to the users. So, what did the Catalan sites do? Although they all each, both Rosanna and Sabade had their particularities, they both designed and implemented a new work method for individualized integrated care plan. GPs, nurses and social workers in primary care were to identify and recruit users and their carers to participate in the improvement project over this 18 month period. They would obtain informed consent for the joint assessment and care planning and collect the information needed to perform the professional assessment. The user's opinion and preferences concerning care were a key aspect that the professionals inquired about on, on this recruit, in this recruitment meeting. Then, the case relevant professionals would hold a meeting to undertake a multidimensional assessment of the user needs. In Ozona, this ad adopted a case conference format. This is a meeting of professionals, but reflecting also on what user and carer have expressed as their needs and their preferences. So, although the user was not sat at the table, their opinion was to some extent at the table. People felt that they were advocating for <laughs> for what the use, user and carers had expressed to be their needs or view. In parallel to the professional meeting, in Sabade, Sabade users were invited to attend a growing older workshop. These were sessions guided by an expert in gerontology where users could meet people in a similar situation as theirs and jointly reflect on the process of going older. For instance, they thought about the fact that it was normal to feel pain and, to, and learnt to somehow and within possibilities accept that they would perhaps be having more and more limitation as limitations as time went by. These sessions were carried out before professionals visited users to agree on care plan options so that users were provided with a space for reflection on what was more important for them in this stage of their life and which care scenarios or activities they would like, prefer or that they could actually take up and do. So, 
As a result of a professional meeting, a draft care plan was produced. A delegation of the care team, usually a social worker and a primary health care GP or nurse, would visit the user at home, present the proposed plan, which was a proposal, and then discuss and agree on what was to be done with the user and with the carers, if they were there. Users could inquire on the implications and possibilities of the different options that were being proposed and indicate which seemed more preferable, realistic or um, suitable for their situation. In the end, this meant that users validated their individualised integrated care plan. This was then transferred to the electronic health and social records and this enabled that different professionals could follow up these care plans. Finally, care plans were activated, providing the user with the agreed care package, which was personalised according to what the user had expressed to want or need. Professionals follow up the care plans in the short term to make sure everything was running smoothly, and then these plans could, are updated or could be updated as necessary, as and when needed, and according to changing needs or preferences of the user. So, what worked and with which results? There, there are three key novelties introduced by this care planning method. Undertaking a multidimensional assessment of needs, integrating health and social perspectives. This was done in the frame of a formalized meeting of all the case relevant professionals who could sit down, meet each other and discuss and agree to what should be done or what they thought they thought should be done. They would then visit the user at home where they felt perhaps more comfortable to speak their view. And professionals would check if what they had in mind matched what the user prioritized and wanted to happen. This was a key aspect and it enabled each user to be able to decide to a certain extent which level of control they wanted in the decisions on, on their care. Did they prefer to be the ones deciding did they want to delegate this to perhaps their wife or, or um, adult children? Do they confide that the professional knew best? This depended on each person. But the opportunity for expressing their view and validating the care plan was provided. These three components of the individualized integrated care plan inspire book, book three. This approach is considered by the professionals. This this here that you can see is a quote from the roadmap well, from, sorry, from Zona, which has been built into the roadmap, um, it was considered by professionals who have applied it as a useful investment of their time so that they could design a care plan for each user, which can be adjusted as and when needed afterwards and easily followed up on. I don't have time to go in depth here into the outcomes observed in, in the Catalan sites, However, this is reported, as Maggie mentioned, on, in our country report, which is available on the SUSTAIN website. So here I will just try to explain outcomes in a nutshell. Basically, from a professional perspective, we observed that professionals felt more, felt more capable of understanding user situation as a whole. They understood and felt co-responsible for the care solution provided, and they felt more like an integrated team providing more optimal care to each user. This in practice meant a kind of change from a my patient, your patient attitude to a we are the user's team feeling. And this was really one a key issue. It's changing the way people perceive their role and relation in terms of with, with the users. Professionals referred to this new approach as an idea as an ideal way of working, but they acknowledged that currently it was hindering, hindered by the environment in which they were having to deliver care. They reported barriers in their current way of working that made coordination in the integrated approach difficult. So although they had managed to improve, they found themselves facing those design elements that still needed to be addressed in order to really empower the professional workforce. Training, shared IT systems, restructured work schedules. And concerning the, the users and carers, what happened for them? What did they obtain what was improved. Our analysis found that users had increased opportunities for participating in decisions on their care, greater access to social and healthcare resources, 
beforehand, it's important to mention here that the, the Catalan social care is somewhat stigmatized because it was traditionally mostly dealing or providing care for the social people at risk of social exclusion. And it was only since 2007 that the home help for older people became a charter of services that the, the local social service, social councils, local councils were to provide to older people. And this is somewhat not always known by the population. So there was stigma, stigmatization with uh, social care, whereas everybody was, or usually um, older people were frequently visiting primary care. So the fact that primary care, primary health care and social workers are working together help provide the access to these sp specific resources that were available in social care. The care also became more prevention oriented with professionals giving advice and safety and maintaining, maintaining independence systematically as part of the care planning activity. So not only were they writing out a care plan, but when they were doing the assessment, they were also looking at the user's home, looking out for risks or hazards and addressing these in the care plan action. Roadmap Book 3 helps to make the link between these kind of specific activities or best practices that appeared in different sustained sites. This is just the cattle and findings, but we also have findings in six other countries. And so Book 3 really helps to make this link and see how you can contribute towards improved professional user outcomes. The roadmap summarizes the lessons learned from each site in short accessible briefs or case stories that are part of book five resources. And these hope to be useful and inspiring examples for anybody that really does want to, is already has some level of integrated care set up, but wants to improve, improve this. We also looked into not only what works, but why. So what were the key elements hindering or favoring, favoring the implementation or scale up of the of improvements? What we found in Catalonia include aspects such as institutional leadership, professional training, co-creation, co-ownership of the project by the professionals that were delivering it, project management, resources invested, specifically in this new approach, but also in care for older persons in general. The richness of detail provided by the sustained improvement projects and why these may or may not happen, or may or may not be successful has been really essential for the roadmap. It's really helped to flesh out all of its books. These books explain what you need in place and how to make a change towards the integrated care approach. They flag issues that can hinder the chances of success and they identify structural barriers that need to be addressed if a successful best practice is to be sustained or scaled up over time. In conclusion, this is my last slide. I hope I'm not going on too long. <laughs> By providing insight on the Catalan Improvement Projects, I hope that this has really helped to illustrate that the Sustained Roadmap learns from case studies that have been done in 13 different locations following a common method. One of its strengths, therefore, is that it builds on real life experiences. I think this is why the roadmap can be particularly useful for other integrated care initiatives. It rings true. It's working in similar contexts with similar, similar um, scenarios as other sites. The self-assessment tool included in book five, and here Maggie hasn't showed it to you, but I really encourage you to look at it because it, it can be really useful. It's a list of questions that each person individually can sit down and reflect on and self-assess themselves on to what extent they're, they're, the care they're providing is doing in terms of um, taking into account the user opinion, a coordination. So it's all of these different elements that are, that are considered as important and relevant in order to provide integrated care. This tool, if everybody does it individually, you can then put, put your results together and discuss them. So it opens up the eye, it breaks the ice and really helps you to, to start, start an initial assessment of what needs improving. 
it also helps to recognize that different people see things in different ways and helps to build common ground. The case stories are also inspiring examples to look at when you're starting or want to improve the work you're doing. And the fact that the roadmap illustrates its message with real quotes from peers makes it something that I think rings true to people that are working in integrated care and that they can easily connect to. Book four on context really helps you oh, realize that it is important to see the big picture to ask those big questions at the right moment and that by answering them, you can build up your strategy. Who do I need on board? How are we currently organized? What are the driving forces? How can I make change? Finally, the infographics in book four together with book one are clear and concise. They summarize this complex issue in an easy to grasp manner. And I think this really makes it a great advocacy tool for integrated care. And precisely because it seems clear, at least in my view, and accessible to different audiences, it can be a useful knowledge transfer tool. And it can be useful for professional training, but also um, on project design and implementation. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Gillian. Thank you very much. Uh, it was, I think, a great presentation to then see how concretely Sustain developed, uh, how concretely integrated care was improved thanks to or through the project, and how that fits, how that is reflected actually in the in the in the roadmap. Uh, so thanks thanks a lot for that. And I think your presentation already uh, already uh, let's say uh, responded to some of the questions we got in the in the chat. So I will not open the floor because we don't have now uh, time. We are approaching the, the hour, uh, but uh, we received some comments and some questions uh, through the through the chat, again, some of which have been responded, for example, how uh, or whether all people were involved in the design and the, and took in order to conduct the improvement projects. Uh, Bert asked this question, um, and I think the Catalan uh, case, uh, the, the Catalan sites explain, express well how all people were actually indeed meaningfully involved in the implementation of the improvement plans. Um, also, there was um, a question. Um, so Bert was asking, should Sustain Best be regarded as a rich toolbox to be adapted to local situations? If so, does Sustain or anyone collect experiences to update Sustain? Finally, does it allow benchmarking of the process towards integrated care? So these are three questions, actually. Um, I wonder if Gillian or Maggie, you want to react to, to any of these? Um, I, I wouldn't mind reacting. The, the first question about involving users, I, I, I agree that Jillian showed how the actual improvement projects involved users, and it just needs to be clear that the roadmap itself is not as directed to users as it is to decision makers and managers and health workers, um, but that in making the roadmap, we involved users. Um, and shared with them to sort of validate uh, whether they felt it was easy to use, but it's not for them to use, it's for health professionals, social care professionals, managers, and, um, and decision makers to use the roadmap to do the projects that um, Julian described, whereby you do engage the user. So that's just one nuance I wanted to clarify. Um, Julian, did you want to respond to any of the other questions about? Yeah. Um, well, how, how are outcomes measured? Um, I would refer to the Sustain website there because um, we have um, the different resources explaining the methodologies. It was a case study design and it, and it follows an evidence integration approach. So, and, and, and here we designed, uh, defined different indicators looking at prevention orientation, person centeredness, safety, um, coordination. Um, we used, uh, we combined surveys, interviews, focus group from different views, and then really triangulated these pieces of evidence to see if what, what if what we found or what the professionals were telling us rang true with what the users were telling us. Sometimes this coincided and sometimes it did not. And of course, some things worked more for some users and some things work less for other users. This is always the case. And, and here it's also particularly 
useful to remind that we're working with older people who sometimes or frequently have cognitive problems. So this was also a research challenge. But I, I won't go on here, but I really would recommend looking at some of the sustained reports in depth if you're interested in that. Um, and well, should it be regarded as a rich toolbox to be adapted to local situations? I think definitely. Um, each local initiative has their own um, <laughs> different stakeholders involved. The first thing you should do is look and see who should be involved, who, who is a stakeholder at your local site, who are in charge of the different services or who, who have an interest in them working more or less together. So the sustain is, is, a, is a reference document to see how things can be done, but they definitely do need to be adapted to what will work in your current, in your local context. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks for the um, for the complete uh, responses. Um, we are we have already uh, reached the hour, um, so I'm aware that there are some other questions that we didn't uh, respond to. For example, there is a question from uh, Rome about uh, whether uh, we gathered information about health conditions from uh, older older people, and also whether there has been an IT component included in the project uh, structure. Um, so, unless you, Gillian, Maggie, if you want to respond to this in, in two minutes yeah, yes i can um, yeah. concerning the um the it component that wasn't there at least in the catalan projects um so this was basically as as i tried to visualize in that one a bit heavy overloaded slide it was relationships between staff and users so nothing was done in terms of integrating or changing the it systems that social care and healthcare was using and um, concerning gathering the information about the health conditions, we did um, when we when we recruited users, we did ask them for the different um, self-reported conditions if they did or didn't have. So we did measure um, what what kind of, of, of um, characteristics or, or um, health conditions problems were present in in our in our users. And took it, bore this in mind. So when I, when I say that there was a quite a lot of cognitive impairment, we we measured this and 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 have the data to see how much how many people are affected by this. Mm -hmm. But then and then in terms of the out outcome, so if if there was an impact in on their health conditions, this wasn't me measured in sustain. It was focused very much on the process and experiences. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gillian. Uh, so now uh, we will leave it here. Um, what I suggest is that uh, if you have any, so you ask some some questions, I will share them with Gillian and Maggie in case they want to complement uh, what they said uh, in response to your to these questions that we didn't respond to. Uh, if you have any other issues you would like to ask us, please feel free. You have my email address. Send me these uh, these questions, and uh, I will try to we will try to respond to to them. Um, and in any case, uh, so this webinar has been recorded, and you can watch it uh, again. Uh, but of course, the main uh, element and product we would like you to use and to and to consult is the roadmap that you can find at the website of of uh, of Sustain of uh, our project. Uh, it's free. Um, you can share it and use it as much as you as you want. And again, thanks to all for being in the in the webinar. We hope it, uh, it responded to your expectations. And I also would like to thank for the great presentations and all the work to to Gillian and also to to Maggie. So thanks for having joined this uh, this webinar. Uh, and uh, and so that's it. Uh, thanks to all of you. And uh, let's keep in let's keep in touch. Thank you. Bye bye.